If you're wanting to make a spooky Halloween charcuterie board, I'm gonna show you everything you need to put this thing together. music honestly I get scared pretty easily it wasn't theme so I kind of had to <laughs> hey guys welcome back to my channel as you can tell I just cannot stay away from the seasonal charcuterie boards so in this video if you couldn't tell already we'll be making a Halloween themed charcuterie board if it's your first time here make sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos as usual I'll be listing all the timestamps in the description down below for you so that you can skip forward to the information that interests you most and with that said, let's head out so that we can get some spooky stuff for this board. <laughs> so we're gonna head over to Walmart. Here we have some spiders. This is gonna be perfect. I also found this fake skull for $4.98 and these super fun skeleton hands for $5.28. And I definitely think I'll be using these again even after I make this board. And on my way out, I'm also gonna pick up these eyeball candies that were only $3.22 and I'm going to show you something fun that we'll be doing with these later. And now that we have all the spooky stuff we'll be needing, it's time to head home so we can wash these pieces. And I'm honestly going to give these a super good scrub because these are basically in a store and that's pretty gross. Who knows where the heck they've been. So I am gonna scrub the heck out of these. I'm probably gonna clean them twice, just cause I'm kinda crazy like that and I always wanna make sure that everything is super duper clean. And these are nice and clean, so I'm gonna jump right into the charcuterie board. I'm gonna get started with the 17 inch charcuterie board and honestly I just love the size and the fact that it spins. <laughs> it's so awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do is place some of the bigger things so I can work around it as I assemble the board. So I'm gonna place this big skull up here in the center and I know I wanna use this ramekin for some olives later which I purchased at Walmart by the way, a really great buy. So I'm gonna place this right here. And the next big thing I'm going to place on this board is my wheel of brie and we're actually going to be making an adorable mummy out of this brie. So to make this mummy I'm going to start by slicing a thin layer off the top of it and a helpful tip to doing this is actually to stick your brie in a freezer for about an hour or just until it's firm and this will allow you to cut a slice through the brie a lot easier because it's nice and firm. And if you notice, I did cut the smoother side of the brie. That's the side you want to work with. If you cut it on the wrong side, don't worry. It'll just kind of give it a little bit more of a rustic look, which honestly kind of fits the vibe of a mummy too. It's really up to you, but I just wanted to work with more smoother bandages. Now, once you have the top off, we're going to cut slices across the cheese, and we're going to use this as the bandages on the mummy. And you just want to place them on the brie, crisscrossing some of them to give it that bandage effect and cut off any excess that you have. You can honestly just play around with the pieces until you're happy with the look. This zombie is such a fun way to add brie to a board. You can even grab a simple plate and just assemble it alone with some crackers and you instantly have a Halloween themed appetizer. Now, if you've ever watched any of my charcuterie board videos, you know I love to get my brie at Aldi because it's so inexpensive. Prices can of course vary depending on where you live, but I purchased mine for $3 here in Miami. And then we're gonna grab these adorable candy eyeballs that we picked up at Walmart and place them right here to complete our mummy. And how adorable is this? It is just so cute, I love it. Now we're gonna work on our next cheese, which is this creamy Toscano cheese from Trader Joe's. It's soaked in Syrah, which is a red wine. So I'm just gonna cut even slices of this entire cheese. And this is probably one of my absolute favorite cheeses. It is extremely decadent. And if you enjoy a super rich cheese like me, this is perfect. I also thought this would pair really nice with the board because of the beautiful dark purple color it has on the outside of the cheese, which is perfect for this darker, more moody board we're trying to create. And once my cheese is all cut, I'm just going to layer each of the slices around the ramekin, keeping the slices in that natural triangular shape that just looks beautiful here. 
And once you've layered them all out, you might want to adjust each slice just to kind of maintain the same amount of space in between each slice so you can see that beautiful purple stripe, but you can also see that cheese in between. And that looks about good, but remember you can always go back and move it around a little bit more if you find it needs adjusting. So now we're going to move on to our blueberry vanilla goat cheese. This is going to be the last and final cheese I'm placing on this board and I picked this one up at Aldi. And this is yet again another cheese that people go insane for. They love it. It is honestly just so good. And I'm just going to cut even slices of this entire log just like I did for the last cheese. And because of the topping on the cheese, I do tend to slice this log just a little bit thicker than I would another cheese just so I can make sure that that topping stays put. And once it's cut, I'm just going to overlap each of the slices on one another right here on this edge. If I can, I always like to put heavy items like this on the edge of the board to really make sure that all of the looser items stay put on the board. Now besides the fact that this cheese is delicious and always super popular, I knew that the purple tones would be perfect for this spooky inspired board. Next up, we're working with this Italian dry salami that I purchased at Walmart. And we're going to create a salami chain with these slices. So for this, we're just going to start off with two slices and then you'll want to fold those in half and then fold them again and then link those together just like this. From here, I'm going to grab another slice of salami and fold it twice just like we did the others and then add that slice to the other two slices. And we'll continue to add more and more until the chain makes it all the way to the end of the board. Now when I do this, I usually like to put a good amount of salami on here so that it's nice and snug and then I use the cheese on the left side and the right side to hold it in place. And I'm going to try to line these up, creating a bit of a round shape on the board and you can of course move around each piece of salami until it gives you the shape that you like. You almost want it to look like a banner and this looks beautiful so I'm going to leave it just like this and we're going to move on to some fruit. So for some delicious fruit, I picked up these Cora Cora oranges. And I'm just going to cut some simple slices out of it by cutting right in the center away from the stem. Now I would have really loved to use some blood oranges for this for an extra spooky effect but there aren't any in season here yet so this is honestly the next best thing. They're really similar to a navel orange but they have a little bit of a deeper orange color to them which I thought would really complement this board. Any orange you can get your hands on will work great for this though. Oranges always tend to add a beautiful vibrant color to any board. And I'm just going to layer them right here and then move on to some delicious Tom Cord grapes. I picked up these at Trader Joe's and love the dark color of them. They're also extra sweet and delicious. You can use regular purple grapes or even some blueberries if you want to use the same color I use. So I'm just going to put some in these areas and set the rest aside for later. And now back to our meats. Here I have some prosciutto from Aldi and I'm going to do a simple and one of my favorite techniques for adding prosciutto to a board which is to make the prosciutto ribbons. So we're just going to grab a slice and fold it almost in half, leaving the fatty part of the prosciutto exposed a little bit. And then we're going to fold it back and forth, pinching it at the bottom until it looks kind of like a fan. And there you have it. Keep doing the same thing on each slice, placing them in small bunches around the board. I usually like to use them in areas that don't already have some meats, so I can break up an area that has a lot of fruits, for example, or cheeses. I really love this technique because it truly adds a lot of elegance and personality to the board and it always looks like you worked so much harder than you actually did. <laughs> and remember you can always move things around if you want to change the placement of it so don't be afraid to have some fun with it. Next we're going to add some apricots that I picked up at Aldi to the board. These are so delicious and the orange is so perfect for any Halloween or even a fall themed charcuterie board. I always love to use these to break up the colors a bit and they are so easy, all you have to do is toss them on the board. Next up we're going to add some fresh blackberries from Aldi that are going to add a nice texture and contribute to the moody color scheme on this board. And for our last meat on this board, we're going to add some of these bite sized salamis that are a little spicy. These are another item that can easily be tossed on any board. Aldi actually sells a non-spicy version of these as well, but to tell you the truth, they are both delicious and you can't go wrong with either one. And as you can tell, I just added them in a couple different areas, just layering them very naturally, not really trying to make it too perfect. And we're going back in with another Cora Cora orange, but this time I'm going to cut it in half at the stem and then cut it in half again to get these half slices that look beautiful on the board as well. And as you can tell here, the color is so rich and orange. It's a little bit different from a navel orange, but I just wanted you to get a close up of how beautiful it is. And I'm gonna lay a couple of these half slices right here in this little area, but I'm gonna pick up this prosciutto just so I can layer the oranges right under it. Next, we're gonna add some crackers to this board with this assortment of crackers from Trader Joe's. 
and I'm gonna grab what they call the vegetable entertainer crackers from this box. Now I'm just gonna layer them in a couple different areas around the board. In the middle here, I'm layering them horizontally. Even when it comes to crackers, layering will always make the board look more presentable and complete in the end. And on the bottom, I'm gonna layer them a bit more slanted. And on the top here, I'm actually going to fan them out a bit. And then eventually we'll overlap these crackers with some other items. And now we're gonna add some of this sea salt dark chocolate that I picked up at Aldi. Now you can of course use any type of chocolate bar you want. Um, this is just the one that I picked up. And since my chocolate bars have this long rectangular shape, I'm actually just cutting them in half. And I'm just stacking them on top of each other in this off-center type of way that looks really nice and decorative. And then I'm just gonna add them wherever I want them. Chocolate is not only perfect for this board because of the darkness, but it's also an inexpensive, easy, and a pretty thing to add to any board. And of course, since it is pumpkin season, I had to add some pumpkin seeds. I thought these were perfect for this type of board. I also included these in a fall themed charcuterie board I made, which I'll make sure to link above here in case you want to check that out. It came out so beautiful and might give you some more ideas of what you can do for your fall boards. And since they are so white, I definitely use them to break up the color in some areas and then use them to just cover any holes so that the board was fully covered. And now I'm going back in with my grapes and my blackberries and my bite-sized salami just to fill this board up. And now it's officially time to add our olives. So for the spooky board, we are actually gonna make our olives into eyeballs. <laughs> I'm gonna start by adding some of these Spanish Manzanilla olives from Aldi into the ramekin. And we're gonna use those same candy eyeballs that we use for our mummy. And then we're gonna grab an olive. I'm gonna use my kitchen scissors to cut into both sides of the olive so that we can easily slip our candy eyeball into the olive. And how stinking adorable does that look? So I'm gonna follow the same process for a couple more olives, honestly, just until the top of the ramekin is pretty full and the eyeballs are the main focus. And now to add another spooky touch to this board, I'm gonna use these letter cookie cutters I picked up from Amazon, and I'm gonna write RIP on the salami chain we made earlier. And I love that they even include punctuation in this pack. And we're also gonna grab some sliced provolone that I purchased at Aldi, and I'm gonna use these cutters to easily cut out my letters. So you'll just stamp directly into the cheese using each cutter. I love these cutters because they also come with these super handy sticks that allow you to actually push the letters right out of the cutter. Now what's great about this is that you can truly write any message you want. I've even used this for a happy birthday charcuterie board, which I can definitely link up here as well if you'd love to see that as well. But it's just such a great way to personalize any type of charcuterie board. And now that I have all my letters cut out, I'm gonna try my best to put these right in the center. And if you are using a period like I am, you will notice that it is a little bit small, so you'll have to be a little strategic about where you place it on the salami to make sure it doesn't fall through any of those holes. <laughs> so I usually like to utilize the areas of the salami that are folded because those usually provide a little bit more stability to keep all of my letters in place. And I'll sometimes just play around with those letters until I have it exactly where I want them and this looks perfect. So now we're gonna add just a little bit more detail and dimension to this board using one of my favorite things, which are pomegranate seeds. Not only are they so delicious, but the brightness of the red is just so beautiful. And I find it just adds a really nice texture no matter where you place it. Now I got these at Trader Joe's where the seeds are already picked, but you can always grab a pomegranate and remove the seeds yourself. And now to really finish this board off, I'm just adding some of this raw honey from Aldi into the ramekin and then I'm gonna top it off with a honey dipper which I purchased on Amazon and as always I will be listing the link down below and of course we need to add some more spooky touches to this board so I'm adding those spiders we purchased at Walmart and I'm also gonna use this gray netting to just complete the Halloween vibe as well as add some of our skeleton hands and then top it with more spiders Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that you love this video and it gave you tons of ideas of how you can make an awesome Halloween charcuterie board. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below because it makes such a difference to this channel. And as usual, don't hesitate to comment down below. I love to connect with you guys and just answer any questions you might have. And with that said, that is all for this video. So I will see you in the next one. Bye.